All right, guys, entering into the infinite. Entering into the infinite. From the beginning of time, we, in spite of our bodily appetites and desires, in the midst of all our clinging to earthly and impermanent things, have ever been intuitively conscious of the limited, transient, and illusionary nature of our material existence, and in our sane and silent moments have tried to reach out into a comprehension of the infinite, and have turned with a tearful aspiration toward the restful reality of the eternal heart, while vainly imagining that the pleasures of earth are real and satisfying, pain and sorrow continually remind us of their unreal and unsatisfying nature ever striving to believe that complete satisfaction is to be found in material things. Ever striving to believe. Ever striving to believe that complete satisfaction is to be found in material things. We are conscious of an inward and persistent revolt against this belief, which revolt is at once a refutation of our essential mortality and an inherent and imperishable proof that only in the immortal, the eternal, the infinite can we find abiding satisfaction and unbroken peace. Just like when I read the Bible, as I'm reading this, at all the bad in me, or that's kind of unfair to say, well, kind of what like the situation I'm in, I kind of feel, I don't know. I like, I like exercising, you know? I like exercising, I like going for runs, I like playing basketball, you know? I like reading, I like, um, I love food. I enjoy getting to know people, I love talking. You know, these things I like, you know? So I'm like, I'm talking to myself like, oh, is it all vanity? Not really, right? It's just, I didn't know this was who I was until recently. Like, I didn't know who I was till recently, which you could say was kind of late, right? You know, so this is a situation that I'm in. So I'm thinking, and here is the common ground of faith. Here the root and spring of all religion. Here the soul of harmony and the heart of love. That we are essentially and spiritually divine and eternal. And that immersed in mortality and troubled with unrest. We are ever striving to enter into a consciousness of our real nature. The human spirit is inseparable from the infinite. and can be satisfied with nothing short of the infinite. The human spirit is inseparable from the infinite can be satisfied with nothing short of the infinite and the burden of pain will continue to weigh upon our hearts and the shadows of sorrow to darken our pathway until ceasing from our wanderings in the dream world of matter we come back to our home in the reality of the eternal as the smallest drop of water detached from the ocean contains all the qualities of the ocean so we detached in consciousness from the infinite contain with ourselves its likeness and as a drop of water must, by the law of its nature, ultimately find its way back to the ocean and lose itself in its silent depths, so must we, by the unfailing law of our nature, at last return to our source and lose ourselves in the great ocean of the infinite. To again become one with the infinite is the goal of the humankind. To enter into perfect harmony with the eternal law is wisdom, love, and peace. But this divine state is and must ever be incomprehensible to the merely personal. Personality, separateness, selfishness are one and the same and on the antithesis of wisdom and divinity. By the unqualified surrender of the personality, separateness, and selfishness cease and we enter into the possession of our divine heritage of immortality and infinity. Such surrender of the personality is regarded by the worldly and selfish mind as the most grievous of all calamities. So he's saying, I guess, uh, it's the hardest thing to do, to surrender personality. The most irreparable loss, yet it is the one supreme and incomparable blessing, the only real and lasting gain. 
the mind unenlightened upon the inner laws of being and upon the nature and destiny of its own life clings to transient appearances things that have in them no enduring substantiality and so clinging perishes for the time being amid the shattered wreckage of its own illusions we cling to and gratify the flesh as though we're going to last forever and though we try to forget the nearness and inevitability of its dissolution the dread of death and of the loss of all that we cling to clouds our happiest hours and the chilling shadow of our own selfishness follows us like a remorseless specter with the accumulation of temporal comforts and luxuries the divinity within us is drugged and we sink deeper and deeper into materiality into the perishable life of the senses where there is sufficient intellect Theories concerning the immortality of the flesh come to be regarded as infallible truths. When our souls are clouded with selfishness in any or every form, we lose the power of spiritual discrimination and confuse the temporal with the eternal, the perishable with the permanent, mortality with immortality, and error with truth. It is thus that the world has come to be filled with theories and speculations having no foundation in human experience. Every body of flesh contains within itself from the hour of birth the elements of its own destruction and by the unalterable law of its own nature must it pass away. The perishable in the universe can never become permanent. The permanent can never pass away. The mortal, the mortal can never become immortal. The immortal can never die. The temporal cannot become eternal nor the eternal become temporal. Appearance can never become reality, nor reality fade into appearance. Error can never become truth, nor can truth become error. We cannot immortalize the flesh, but by overcoming the flesh, by relinquishing all its inclinations, we can enter the region of immortality. God alone hath immortality. And by, by only realizing the God state of consciousness do we enter into it immortality all nature in its myriad forms of life is changeable and permanent enduring only the informing principle of nature endures nature is many and is marked by separation the informing principle is one and is marked by unity by overcoming the senses and the selfishness within which is the overcoming of nature we emerge from the chrysalis of the personal and illusionary and fly into the glorious light of the impersonal, the region of universal truth out of which all perishable forms come. Let us therefore practice self-denial. Let us conquer our animal inclinations. Let us refuse to be enslaved by luxury and pleasure. Let us practice virtue and grow daily into higher and ever higher virtue until at last we grow into the divine and enter into both the practice and the comprehension of humility, meekness, forgiveness, compassion, and love, the practice and comprehension of which constitute divinity. Good will gives insight, and only those who have um, see, it says good will A good will gives insight. So like having a good will kind of allows you to see things from, you know, positively. And it's a way to protect yourself. And only those who have good will so conquer their personality that they have but one attitude of mind, that of good will toward all creatures, are possessed of divine insight and are capable of distinguishing the true from the false. Supremely good people are therefore wise, divine, enlightened, and have knowledge of the eternal where you find unbroken gentleness enduring patience sublime loneliness graciousness of speech self-control self-forgetfulness and deep and abounding sympathy look there for the highest wisdom seek the company of such people for they have realized the divine they live with the eternal they have become one with the infinite eschew those who are impatient given to anger boastful who cling to pleasure refuse to renounce their selfish gratifications and who practice not goodwill and far-reaching compassion. For such people do not have wisdom. All their knowledge is vain, and their works and their words will perish, for they are grounded on that which passes away. 
the world, the body, the personality are mirages upon the desert of time, transitory dreams in the dark night of spiritual slumber, and those who have crossed the desert, those who are spiritually awakened have alone comprehended the universal reality where all appearances are dispersed and dreaming and, and delusion are destroyed. There was one great law that exacts unconditional obedience One unifying principle that is the basis of all diversity. One eternal truth. One eternal truth wherein all the problems of the earth pass away like shadows. To realize this law, this unity, this truth, is to enter into the infinite, is to become one with the eternal. To center one's life in the great law of love is to enter into rest harmony and peace to center one's life in the great law of love is to enter into rest harmony and peace to refrain from all participation in evil and discord to cease from all resistance to evil and from the omission of that which is good and to fall back upon unswerving obedience to the holy calm within is to enter into the innermost heart of things is to attain to a living conscious experience of that eternal and infinite principle which must ever remain a hidden mystery to the merely perceptive intellect. Until this principle is realized, the soul is not established in peace, and those who so realize it are truly wise, not wise with the wisdom of the learned, but with the simplicity of a blameless heart. To enter into a realization of the infinite and eternal is to rise superior to time and the world and the body which constitutes the kingdom of darkness and is to become established in immortality heaven and the spirit which make up the empire of light the time the world and the body which constitutes the kingdom of darkness to enter into the realization of the infinite and eternal is to rise superior to it and is to become established in immortality. Heaven and the spirit which make up the empire of light. Entering into the infinite is not a mere theory or sentiment. It is a vital experience that is a result of assiduous or assidua, assiduous a-S-S-I-D-U-O-U-S -S -S -S. Assiduous practice in inward purification When the body is no longer believed to be Even remotely your real self When all appetites and desires are thoroughly subdued And purified When the emotions are rested and calm And when the oscillation of the intellect ceases And perfect poise is secured Then and not till then Does consciousness become one with the infinite not until then is childlike wisdom and profound peace secured. We grow weary and gray over the dark problems of life and finally pass away and leave them unsolved because we cannot see our way out of the darkness of the personality, being too much engrossed in its limitations. Seeking to save our personal lives, we forfeit the greater impersonal life and truth. Clinging to the perishable, we are shut out from the knowledge of the eternal. By the surrender of self, all difficulties are overcome. And there is no error in the universe, but the fire of inward sacrifice will burn it up like chaff. No problem, however great, but will disappear like a shadow under the searching light of self-abnegation. Problems exist only in our own self-created illusions, and they vanish away when self is yielded up. Self and error are synonymous. Error is involved in the darkness of unfathomable complexity, but eternal simplicity is a glory of truth. Love of self shuts us out from truth, and seeking our own personal happiness, we lose the deeper, purer, and more abiding bliss. Those who have yielded up that self, that personality that humankind most loves and to which they cling with such fierce tenacity have left behind them all perplexity, and have entered into a simplicity so profoundly simple as to be looked upon by the world involved as it is in a network of error as foolishness. 
Yet such people have realized the highest wisdom in a, and are at a rest in the infinite. They accomplish without striving and all problems melt before them for they have entered the region of reality. They deal not with the changing effects but with the unchanging principles of things. Having yielded up their lusts, errors, opinions and prejudices they have entered into possession of the knowledge of god having slain the selfish desire for heaven along with it the ignorant fear of hell having relinquished even the love of life itself they have gained supreme bliss and life eternal the life which bridges life and death and owes its own immortality having yielded up all without reservation they have gained all in rest and peace on the bosom of the infinite only those who have become so free from self as to be equally content to be annihilated as to live or to live as to be annihilated are fit to enter into the infinite. Only those who have become so free from self as to be equally content to be annihilated equally content to be annihilated annihilated. So he's saying, man, you'd be, you be so much at peace, you don't care what happens to you. Only those who have become so free from self as to be equally content to be annihilated as to live, or to live as to be annihilated, are fit to enter into the infinite. It's only got to be balanced, kind of. Only those who, ceasing to trust their perishable self, have learned to trust in boundless measure the great law, the supreme good, are prepared to partake of undying bliss. For such people, there is no more regret or disappointment or remorse. For where all selfishness has ceased, these sufferings cannot be. And whatever happens to them, they know that it is for their own good and they are content, being no longer the servant of self, but the servant of the Supreme. They're no longer affected by the changes of earth. And when they hear of wars and rumors of wars, their peace is not disturbed. And where others grow angry and cynical, quarrelsome, they bestow compassion and love. Though appearances may contradict it, they know that the world is progressing and that through its laughing and its weeping, through its living and its keeping, through its follies and its labors, weaving in and out of sight, to the end from the beginning, through all virtue and all sinning, reeled from God's great spool of progress, runs the golden thread of light. When a fierce storm is raging, none are angered about it because they know it will quickly pass away. And when the storms of contention are devastating the world, the sage, looking with the eye of truth and pity, knows that it will pass away, and that, out of the wreckage of broken hearts which it leaves behind, the immortal temple of wisdom will be built. Sublimely patient, sublimely patient, infinitely compassionate, deep, silent, and pure, their very presence is a benediction. When they speak, their listeners ponder their words in their hearts and by them rise to the higher levels of attainment. Such are they who have entered into the infinite, who by the power of utmost sacrifice have solved the sacred mystery of life. I love that chapter. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. And you want to be notified that means you must really are into the book that i'm reading and i appreciate that but just you know maybe tell a friend or two thank you guys peace